principle of DC motor. So the principle of DC motor is the current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field it produces a torque there. That's what the principle of a um, DC motor. So and again I told you the flux or the amount of torque depends upon the product of field flux and armature flux and of course sign of angle between these two which is kind of 90 always in the DC machine uh, which is taken care by the commutator in fact. So phi f and phi a r. So but I want to derive an actual equation for the torque. How much torque is being exerted on the particular rotor in this case on armature. Uh, so to know that I know the basic equation torque into omega which is equal to p where p is a power here the power on the torque uh, power on the rotor in fact which is the armature so that this can be defined as power is a product of voltage and current um, so if you look at the DC machine or the DC motor particularly so armature is here two poles and supply is given so plus p is the voltage due to which the voltage is generated here back EMF which is called E why this E has been generated because a current carrying conductor, the current current is being given by the supply. So due to supply, the current has produced. So current carrying conductor produces a torque, so it starts rotating. And again, I have one more principle, which is a conductor, a rotating conductor placed in a magnetic field will produce a EMF, which is a Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction. So the EMF also generated. So this EMF, which already calculated uh, the mathematical equation, which is given by ZP phi n by 68. This is a generated EMF in the armature. Let it be. So where, what, whatever it may be, let it be a motor or a generator. Any ro ro rotating conductor placed in a magnetic field, change in flux will happen. So the EMF is induced. So the EMF is given by this equation. So this we call as yesterday we have seen called as a kind of counter EMF or we call as a back EMF. These are the, the two terms that we call because it is opposing EMF or B. And moreover, E is less close. So the current direction is going from V to E. The V is here, E is here. So always the current flows from a higher potential to lower potential. Like a water. Water goes from higher to the lower. So similarly here, even we can see the current flows from the higher voltage to the lower voltage there. Anyway, I just want, so the power on this rotor, which is armature, rotor is the one which is rotating. So which is a product of E into IA. So IA is the armature current which is going inside to the armature. So which is IA, it's a motor, we are giving a supply. So from here, this is electromagnetic torque produced. So from here, you can have calculation omega 2 pi n by 60 I can make out. E is, you can make jet P phi n by 60 A. A is number of parallel paths. Depends upon the winding, it will come up into IA. Yeah, from here, you can calculate so, N and get cancelled some 60, 60 and what else? So, from here I can have a torque equation which is equal to T equal to ZP by 2 pi A into phi IA. Look at here, this is the complete equation. So, torque is given by ZP by 2 pi, this is A of course. 2 pi a, this entire term is a constant here, number of conductors, poles and other things are constant. So the torque equation becomes T equal to some constant K into phi into I a. That's what I said was initially also. The torque is a proportionality of a field flux phi f and phi a r. Field flux phi f is the one which is phi here in this case, neglecting armature reaction here. I am just considering the field flux, armature reaction is very negligible. If armature reaction is con considered, the change in flux will be, or the, the resultant flux is different due to demagnetizing effect, the magnitude will come down. So IA, IA is actually proportional to phi AR armature. Notation I have used AR, you A here, you can have AR also. AR means armature, no problem. So this is the final equation for the torque, which is equal to K phi I, which means that torque is directly proportional to flux. And the torque is directly proportional to armature current, electromagnetic torque here. So I want to uh, have the equation, the K which is we have defined here, ZP by 2 pi A 
k value where k equal to this one, where k equal to I can write down, which is equal to z p by 2 by e. So I want to write the same EMF. I want to write this EMF equation in terms of this k so that it might be useful in problems. So I have another way of expressing this E. Uh, can you please express this N in terms of omega? I want to express this N in terms of omega. So E equal to Z P phi by 68. So can you please say the N? I know that omega which is equal to 2 pi N by 60. So from here N becomes omega 60 upon 2 pi. So please substitute that. So n value is equal to omega 60 upon 2 pi. So 60, 60 get cancelled out here. You can see the equation. That p omega 5 by 2 pi a. So e can be written as now. I'm just writing on the top. So e equal to that p by 2 pi a into 5 into omega. Look at this. Please compare this equation and the equation here now. So the constant k in both the places, k is constant here. That is the same quantity e equal to k into phi omega. So these two equations are important as far as the, the problems are concerned. So 1 and 2, of course the k in both the equations are equal. Maybe you can calculate k from here and substitute here. We will try to get the value of torque, so it depends upon the problems. So we have the two equations here. This is how the torque and the EMF equations back EMF in a DC motor in time. We'll see the, the some of the characteristics of uh, the DC motors. Like uh, what we see in the generators, even in the motor also we have different varieties of uh, motors. Like uh, shunt motor, series motor, compound motor. The no naming is the uh, same what we used in the um, DC generator. We'll see the characteristics of each and every motor here now. Yeah. So we'll see the first uh, shunt motor. Basically, what are the characteristics that I'm interested here? Basically, I have the three quantities which are important in case of motor are torque, flux. Maybe I can replace this with a kind of armature current rather than saying a flux. So armature current and the speed. How the torque is going to change with respect to the current? Because current means here a load. Please understand anywhere we talk about a current, which means it's a load current. In approximately load current and armature current both are same, provided field current is neglected. So with change in load, how the torque on the rotor is going to change? That we need to know. And of course, boss, when the change in load, which is corresponds to change in current, what about the speed of a rotor? Because it is rotating with some speed. How the speed is going to change with respect to load and armature current? Load means armature current. And how the torque is going to change with respect to speed? Or how the speed is going to change with respect to torque rather? So I can have three characteristics. One is three characteristics for each motor. One is torque versus armature current. Another one is speed versus armature current. And speed versus torque. These are the three characteristics we'll be kind of studying in here for all the motors. The first motor I'll be taking here is a shunt motor. So I can draw a shunt motor like this. V and current is line current here, of course, armature current IA or IAR, field current IA. The back EMF is generated inside the armature, which is E here now. So from here, I want to draw the torque first. I know the equation torque is equal to K into phi IA. Yes, phi is the flux coming from here, the field current. The field current IF which is given by voltage V upon this field resistance is say RSH. So this is RSH. Since the terminal voltage is constant, I, I consider this as a uh, resid supply, ideal source and RSH is constants V by R is field current constant. When IF is constant, the flux also will be constant in this case. So the flux is constant, so this becomes torque equal to some K into phi, another constant, say K dash equal to IA. What is this equation? 
y equal to mx is a line passing through the origin is an equation. So I can draw this equation as look at the equation here now. Torque on y axis, current here now, with increase in current, torque also get increased there proportionately, and you can draw this one. Linear. Which means it makes sense for us. Look at things physically. Increase in this is current means it's in fact a load. More load on the rotor, meaning the loads are mechanical loads on the motor. On the generator, loads are electrical loads. On the generator, electrical loads are like bulb, fan, geyser, provided these are kind of PC loads. Whereas in the DC motor, loads are maybe lifting the water from first floor, maybe ground floor to the first floor, or to the second floor, or lifting any weight on the down, or maybe fan is rotating there. All these are kind of mechanical loads there. So we call it. So that when the load gets increased, obviously the current drawn from the supply gets increased. So something like asking the motor to lift the water to a ground floor to the first floor. Say current is 1 amp. If you ask the motor to lift the, the current to the, maybe lift the water to the second floor, obviously the current will get increased. That's a more work has to be done. It has to do more work. So current has to be more obvious. That's what increase in load has to be. Increase in the load means increase in the current there. That's what I'm trying to say. See, the basic thing is why the current is getting increased first and the load getting increased. All our loads are parallel loads. Please understand this. All our loads are parallel loads here. So let us suppose we have a battery, DC battery, I am assuming. 10 volts, I am taking electrical load here. Say 1 ohm resistance is there. Forget about these two. 10 by 1. 10 amps is the current. If I add one more load of 1, one ohm, maybe another fan or geyser, which is a, assuming that those are DC loads. 1 and 1, 0.5. 10 by 0.5 is again 20 amps. Again, if you add one, so resultant resistance decreases, so the current increases. So basically, increase in a load means decrease in a load resistance. So that makes the, the current to draw from the uh, uh, current to more current is being drawn from the supply, in fact. Anyway, that's the basic thing. So the first characteristics is a linear line. What about the speed versus current? Meaning, yes, boss, when the load increases, the load is being connected to the rotor, mechanical load. Then what about the speed of this rotor? So for this, maybe you can derive an equation or Try to get a mathematical equation uh, between speed versus the current. So I have, for this I have equation, we have already seen z speed phi n by 68. Of course, this E value in terms of voltage, if you want, you can express it. There is no harm in expressing that. So from here you can express this value E, look at here this equation for the motor. V equal to E plus IARA. V is more than E. So from here E becomes V minus IARA equal to ZP phi by 68. This entire is a constant boss. The shunt motor flux also is a kind of constant there. So this entire is kind of a constant here now. So from here it becomes I make this constant as a sum K double dash into N. So, what is the equation here now? So, this becomes now n equal to many v minus n k double dash n is equal to v minus i r a. So, if load increases, so what will happen to this n? n is decreases because it's in, in the other side, minus sign. This k increases. So, if we draw the characteristics here. <coughs> Speed versus i a. IA is 0, the speed is maximum. You can see this. And so which means maximum which is called as a base current. This is N base or the rated current we call or no load speed. As the current increases, so then this term decreases, meaning the speed also will decrease. So the characteristics will be coming. So speed decreases with increase in obvious levels. When you keep a load on me, let us suppose I have a 10 kg rice bag, uh, I will run at a kind of 5 km per hour, assuming that. If you keep the, the 20 kg rice bag on me, obviously my speed will come down, provided your input is, uh, provided your power is kind of is going to be constant there. And so here also is kind of current load increases, so the speed get decreases here, obviously that's a common sense in this case. So even here, the speed versus the torque. See, I have drawn torque versus current, speed versus current. 
can't have a speed or characteristics here now and even i know that so if you look at this one or uh, maybe here phi ia so i know that torque is directly proportional to ia phi is constant so i can just replace this ia by torque so your characteristics will become now speed versus torque here because torque and current are both are proportional so speed speed versus torque characteristic speed versus current characteristic same here in this case so many so i have a kind of torque is zero when the load is zero or my approx ideal scenario and the speed is high as the load increases obviously torque has to increase there um, at the same time speed will be decreased this we call as a drooping characteristics force normally here now this is a kind of drooping characteristic it's also drooping so decreases in fact <coughs> these things if you look at the scenario i would say always i discuss this point again although we say the speed torque characteristics are we have drawn all the characteristics provided your armature reaction is neglected boss in all the cases we have drawn the characteristics in armature reaction is neglected ideal scenario meaning there is no flux reduction when the flux reduction happens due to armature reaction so obviously your torque characteristics will get changed if the flux is reduced because of armature reaction so initially the armature reaction is kind of very less or compensation can be done so as you go ahead as the current increases ar effect will be more so then phi will be decreases and your characteristic torque will be coming down like this so this is the characteristics so with this is with armature reaction let it be down here so because this is more because flux is more with armature reaction flux is less demagnetizing effect so then armature the torque will be come down anyway if you consider the armature reaction also here now when the speed torque characteristics are drawn here now from here the speed will be depending upon i said the flux is constant boss a term zp by 60a if you consider this as a k and your phi will be coming out here with increase in current this term will be decreasing with increase in current armature current armature reaction will be more please understand this ia get increases armature reaction get increases resultant flux will get decreases yesterday we have seen when the flux decreases here now one numerator term is getting decreased denominator term also getting decreased so the overall this term is kind of again keeping constant something like 10 by 5 and then if get this get decreases by to a 5 and this get decreased by 2.5 again the ratio is same so that's what it's becoming here now so that way the shunt motor is considering the armature reaction normally due to their armature reaction even though we provide a best compensation with all the kind of compensating winding and interfolds and other things but still there is some armature reaction so we call as a shunt motor is a constant speed motor there or the regulation of a uh, shunt motor is kind of zero the speed regulation in fact anyway we'll discuss those things soon so in the speed control so normally all these characteristics are drawn considering the armature reaction is kind of neglected right